Hello everybody and welcome to this next episode of Kerbal Space Program as uh, point two five economic boom. So last time we messed around a little bit with uh, space planes, not the actual spacefaring type. I should probably call them more like airplanes. And uh, one of them is actually right over there. It's the Kerbin Flyer Mark One. Basically built a simple aircraft capable of just zooming around uh, planet Kerbin with the air breathing engines. And uh, after a couple trials and error, we actually managed to fly it and land it successfully over there on the actual the um, abandoned runway. Uh, maybe we'll check out that area in another episode. But in this episode, I want to focus mainly on how to make an, a functional SSTO aircraft using the Rapier engines. And preferably one that is interplanetary capable, one that has you know sufficient delta V to potentially get to another planet with that SSTO craft. Now, of course, with any uh, good SSTO, you're always going to need to refuel it. So if you plan to send SSTOs interplanetary-wise, it's good to also send up uh, refuelers. But anyway, this is what I've come up with, and I'm calling this the Lathe SSTO Mark I. And I guess, I guess, you know, I might as well let the cat out of the bag. One of my... Um, my most favorite moons on the entire game is Lathe. That's the um, the only other planet or moon in this entire system with an atmosphere besides Kerbin. Uh, I guess I should say a breathable oxygen atmosphere. And because of that, it's the only other planet that you can bring air-breathing aircraft over onto there. So the plan is to launch an SSTO spacecraft capable of interplanetary distances and get it over to Lathe and fly around Lathe, basically. Fly around the atmosphere of Lathe, land on Lathe, get some science, basically take off again and get back into space again with this aircraft. Do another refueling and send it on home. So it's going to be quite a mission. It's going to require many refuelers, actually probably just two, two refuelers. One to stay in Kerbin orbit to refuel it once it's gotten off Kerbin and then one to go in orbit Lathe for when we get back from Lathe. So we can send it on back to Kerbin. <clears throat> but we'll worry about those refuelers when we when the time comes. Um, and I'm not even sure that I'm going to actually do this mission next. I'm going to probably save that for one of the last missions. But I just wanted to build and you know, take a little break from exploration just to show how I made this uh, SSTO craft and I already tested it it is fully capable of getting into orbit it has just barely enough fuel to do that and and uh, so again hence the need to redock which is why we put this nifty little redocking bay on here but I'm gonna explain uh, exactly how I built this by just kind of building it again hopefully I remember how it goes <laughs> I've got it all written down here but still you know you never know so Basically, I wanted to use the new Mark II parts because I think those look so freaking cool. They're just so sleek and um, mainlined, or, or what's that word I'm looking for? Uh, streamlined is what I'm looking for. So we'll go with the Mark II cockpit capable of holding two crew. And uh, so that's what we start with, basically. Next thing I added on was a monopropellant tank with the Mark II design because, again, you're going to want this thing to be able to maneuver in space and you're and you're going to need that monopropellant to basically dock with stuff once you get out into space so that's why we're going to put that monopropellant tank right on there all right next thing we do need is for this thing to be able to redock now with these new parts came a whole bunch of like interesting things like you can now slap uh, cargo bays on here as you can see so to make it very much like the actual space shuttle and with you know they have like opening and closing doors and stuff and whatnot but we're not going to mess with those today um, but I, well, I do want to put on there's the Mark II Clampatron. Now, by default this thing opens upwards like that but I kind of like them to open downwards. I just call it a preference of mine or whatnot. You know obviously if you guys want it to open upwards you can leave it upwards. But I like to dock facing downwards with my SSTOs. Again, just a preference. So we'll do that. Next, we want to grab some fuel. And just like in the last episode, I kind of went over all these different parts. You have parts that have both liquid fuel plus oxidizer. That's what LF plus O means. And you have parts that only have liquid fuel. In this case, I want one that has both um, liquid fuel and oxidizer. 
So we'll take this short one here, because I don't want this thing to get too long. We'll just slap it on there. And if you right click it, you can see that it does have both liquid and oxidizer. We're going to need that for our rocket engines, basically. Next, I'm going to grab this here, the 1.25 adapter. And it's like this, so I'm just going to hit the D key and switch it around so it's basically facing like that. And again, this has also both liquid and oxidizer. That's, gonna, that's basically the main fuselage of the ship. It kind of looks like, like a very long football or something. A very thin football. If someone stepped on it, maybe. Um, <clears throat> over here in propulsion, I'm going to grab the atomic rocket motor. And this is only to be used basically once we're in space. There's no other need to use this. And in fact, if you were just building a regular SSTO just to orbit Kerbin, you wouldn't even need this. But because I have plans to take this out to lathe, we're going to need that extra delta V from all the um, the ISP that this thing carries. So that's why we're going nuclear. <laughs> all right. After that, we need some kind of structure on the side to hold the um, rapier engines, which I'm planning on using. But first, so we'll go ahead and grab these Mark I fuselages here. So it's, this is kind of like a combination airplane here of the Mark I and the Mark II pieces. We'll slap that right on there. Now this just has jet fuel, or liquid fuel rather, no oxidizer. And there's a reason for that. Um, I was going to mainly just make them both out of these fuel tanks, but it got too heavy. And we actually ended up running out of liquid fuel before we ran out of oxidizer, which Usually it's the opposite case. You always end up burning through your oxidizer first, but in this case we ran out of liquid fuel. So that's why I'm doing a half and half. Kind of like that. It's, plus it saves on mass. I do believe that uh, this fuselage is only mass 0.9. However, the full-on fuel tank is mass 2.25. So it, these are heavy as hell compared to these. So it works in two ways. <clears throat> for, two way for two reasons there. All right. On top of those, we are going to connect the awesome freaking rapier engine. These things are seriously the best. If you're making SSTOs, you need, well, I shouldn't say you need to, but you really should consider the rapier. Uh, before these existed, you had to have, you had to have both turbojet engines, and then you had to have a, like another set of these. So you basically had to like copy this like this, and you had to like use like the toroidal spike. And it was just a pain in the dick, basically. So the rapier gets, you know, get, gets rid of your pain in the dick. <laughs> I apologize if you're female. I guess you'd be a pain in somewhere else. But anyways, so we put those on there. Rapier engines, very good engines, I must say. Um, now on to some science, since we do want to do a good bit of science. This isn't science. Here we are. We want the science junior. I'm just going to slap on here if it'll stop being temperamental come on it's being stupid ah there we are just for some science and the mystery goo will also slap on the side this way we can do do two goos and two science juniors that's probably plenty probably and so let's grab the flight engineer just gonna slap that uh, somewhere on here. Probably right here is fine. Just so we can see, you know, how much delta V and whatnot we have. Let's see. While we're doing science, we might as well. Uh, we can put all these other things on here. The barometer, the seismicometer, the thermometer, and the gravometer. <laughs> we'll just call them that. All right. Also, we need a ladder. Grab the mobility enhancer. And just so we can see what it looks like, we'll extend it and we probably should uh, just shift queuing basically to just bend it out like that. I feel like it would work better that way. This way the Kerbals can get in and out and see if it'll let me retract it. Oh, it does. Wow, sometimes it doesn't work, but today it feels like working. <laughs> okay. Um, so, we need intakes for these engines because they won't be able to breathe. So I'm going to use the shock cone because I think it's the best one. Um, intake, area, 0.012, and amount, 0.4. Plus, they just look really cool. So even if they aren't the best one, 
I just kind of really like them. So we'll slap those on the front just for some air. Also, we'll slap on these structural intakes. I, th I think they just look cool. Put a couple of them up there. And just for extra good measure, we'll slap on two of these down here. Just so that this thing can get so much air. I mean, that's what you really want with the SSTOs. You want to get them as high as possible, as high and fast as possible on the air breathers before you switch over to your rocket engines. I feel like it just works out better that way. <clears throat> now, um, I attached some of these to the sides. So I think, A, it looks cool. Let's see, I might have to detach this for a hot sec. I think it looks cool, and because B, it, it helps us attach things to it. Like this, we want basically this as far back as possible. And so by putting these here, we're able to do that. And the reason we're doing that is because we don't want this engine sticking way out the back. Actually, this might be too far back now that I'm looking at it. Probably like something like that is okay. All right, we'll see. We'll finagle around with it a little bit. I can't try to remember if the other one was that far back, but I uh, can't quite remember. Um, but anyway, we'll see. So after that, we want to put some wings, some delta wings. Again, these are the, I think you get the most lift rating, and we'll put these as far back as we possibly can. Something like that. Because again, we're going to want, actually, you know, I don't like this. I'm going to move this forward, I think. Let's see. It's hard to remember precisely what I did, but it's, you know, I did something like this, and then I attached these to here before they bent. Something like that. We might have to make some adjust adjustments, but, uh, bear with me here for one second. It's tricky remembering if it's something like that. I don't know. Yeah, we'll go with that for now. We'll test it out. <laughs> All right, so next we want to slap on there the Elevons. Press the W key, I figured that one out last time. That'll just get those nice and engaged on there like that. And we also want some fins, some tail fins, which we will slap on here like that. Cool. I'll just right click again, we'll get rid of the pitch on these ones, we'll get rid of the yaw on these ones, because I, like again, I think I saw someone do that, maybe it was Scott Manley, can't remember, <laughs> someone did that before. Ah uh, yes, and you know what we should also include is, what you call it, solar panels, definitely want to get a couple of those on there, just so that we can recharge stuff when the time comes. good to be able to recharge your things here. And you can you can really go as crazy as you want with these. I'm not going to go too nuts with them. Maybe just like that. That's fine. Then we also need a couple batteries. Slap these things on like this. Grab a second pair. This way we have adequate storage for them. Okay. Kind of again, I'm kind of going off a rough drawing I made of this thing just to help me remember what exactly I put on here, but that looks pretty good so far. All right, um, I also came down here. Now, this is interesting. I added this delta wing small just down here, and I shift queued it or shift eat it back up just so I could have a surface to put some wheels on. Cause I, I don't like when the wheels are here, and they don't seem to work when they're out here, but right here seems like a, just a perfect spot for them. I don't know why. Call me crazy, but they seem to just work the best like that. Now i got to flip them around, I think. Again, wheels are always finicky. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wheels are always finicky in this. I think that's... You know, it's a little tilted. See, for, it just, for some reason, that's probably better right there. It never wants to, like, lay straight, but that'll work. Need a wheel for the front. 
like that. And since this thing is so long, I ended up throwing a couple wheels um, basically over here also. Two of them here I believe I did and then another two went like over here. Just because every time I tried landing it, it was so long that it would basically like slap down. <laughs> I'm trying to try to visualize this like a dead fish. It would slap its like head down and the back would whip around and then the whole spacecraft would break around right here. So having the extra wheels here helped a lot with stability when I landed. So hopefully that'll also do the same now. <clears throat> and I did have fuel lines. I believe I went from, I think from here out to these tanks here, just so I could feed off the center first, and then give it to the outside. Help out a little bit. We also need a couple struts, just to help hold this thing together. Because it is a bit shaky, like it's a long craft. Just strut it up a little bit. It's always good to do this. And on the bottom, too. You can kind of go nuts with this, too, if you want. I think we'll leave it like that for now. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. Shock intake cones, the rapiers, the fuel. Oh, I remember. We've we got, got to put RCS on here, actual thrusters. So this was kind of a pain. They don't want to quite sit on the wings, but I feel like that's the best place to put them. So I kind of shift W them until they're relatively straight. And maybe one more. It's kind of it's kind of hard to get it just right. That probably that's that looks good. <clears throat> A little RCS like that. A little RCS in the front. Just kind of on both sides. Ooh, that's not a good spot for it. Could be up here. Yeah. And we also want the linear RCS port to push out that way, just to help us maneuver even more. Now, this is weird, too. It doesn't quite want to do it here, but again, if I shift W it, it kind of works anyway. And <laughs> it doesn't look very good. And for you purists out there, you probably won't like this very much, but I think it does still work. As long as it's facing straight out, I think that that works. Don't ask how it works, it just does. <laughs> Alright. So that's good, we had the RCS ports on there. Um, got this, got all the science we need. Action groups, let's check that out. So, this is where it gets a bit complicated. Because um, you gotta, gotta want to set up a lot of action groups for switching the engines over and turning some off and turning the intakes off. I mean, you might have a system for it. I have a system also. This is just the one that works the best for me. Um, so uh, by all means, if you have a better one, go ahead and use that. But I like custom one. I make the rapiers switch the mode. They'll start out air breathing, but once you hit one, it'll turn them from air breathing into jet engine. And but with that, we also have to turn off all the intakes. So we're gonna go around toggle all the intakes these ones too and these ones up here because if you, in my understanding, if you don't do that if you leave them open it causes extra drag and it'll kinda of drag you down. So you gotta close the intakes once you switch to jet engines. Alright, next custom 2 I make just the atomic, toggle it That'll shut it on, or turn it on and shut it off, just when we need it. And custom three, I think it was just shut down or toggle, toggle the rapiers. Let's say you just want to turn them off without switching them. You gotta switch them off. See, so custom three turns them off. It seems a little complicated, but you know, once you get used to it, it's not bad. So, one more time, custom one switches the mode. They start out air breathing. It'll turn them into jet, and then it shuts down the intakes. Custom two just turns on and off the atomic engine and custom 3 turns on and off the rapiers. So that's the action groups. Again, if you have a better method of doing it, by all means, go ahead and use it. Um, 
I'll call this just stock, like st stock SSTO Mark 1. It's not going to be, I'm going to use the one that I built previously to go to lathe because I trust it a little more. Again, I'm not sure if I trust how, like see how it's kind of splayed inwards like that. I'm not sure if I trust that very much, but let's do a little test. We'll turn on all these little things. These, these are the things that will tell you if you did a good job. Oh, I forgot something very important. I just realized we need a canard in the front, but not too far in the front. I believe probably like right here is fine. Just because that'll help you lift the front of the craft, but again, I don't want the center of lift to be too far forward. Because you got to think, this fuel is going to drain this way, causing that center of mass to go backwards, and your center of lift will stay in the same spot. So that's why it's good to have little heavier things in the front and not to have your center of lift too far forward. You got to kind of have it as far back as you can make it. That's why I kind of dragged everything way back here. Um, again, I explained this last episode. You want the pink center of thrust to go straight through the yellow center of mass. Otherwise, you'll be in uh, Agony City. <laughs> and you want the center of lift, this blue one, to generally be behind or close to or behind the center of mass. Otherwise, again, the front of your craft is going to flip upwards and it's not going to be a good time. Um, but I think this is it. Um, I'm trying to, again, trying to think if I forgot anything. This generally looks good. Hell, let's let's test it. What do we got? We got 20. We're at 20 minute mark here. We'll just see if it if it lifts off. And if it does, we'll we'll close the episode off there. And if it completely crashes and burns, maybe we'll try to fix it a little bit and see if we can get it a little better. Again, I tested the one that I built previously, but this new one I just threw together now from memory. It might not be perfect. So if you're following along and trying to build with me, um, you might have to tweak it a little bit. And that's not too bad. See these these wheels here. If you don't put them in the middle, it really screws up the uh, <laughs> the, the thing is very unstable if you don't do that. But um, all right, so I'm gonna hit X just to kill the throttle. I'm gonna hit the space bar that'll activate all the engines, and then we're gonna hit two to kill the atomic engine. So now we're just using these rapiers. Hit the S, the T key rather, and now let's just throttle all the way up. We get to see if these wheels are straight. <laughs> One of the biggest problems with these is that these back wheels, because we have to like really finagle them, they end up not being straight, which causes issues, stability issues on the runway. See, we're already turning a little bit to the right, which is slightly uh, not good. But let's just see what happens. Okay, oh, all right, so we're all right. We're up. We're up. We'll hit the G key. That's pretty good so far. And let's just get this thing right on the 90 line. You want to kind of want to have it in the 90. And we'll just get this thing pointed up. Now, I don't think I'll do it this episode, but next episode, we will... I'll demonstrate how to basically properly fly an SSTO from the ground into orbit. This episode will just kind of be showing you how to build one and uh, just testing it out preliminarily. Preliminarily. I don't even know what's the word. Preliminary. But anyway, you, you can see that we are getting air from here, air from here, and air from here, too. Not bad, and let's see, our thrust rate ratio right now is just a little under one, which is not ideal. You kind of want that to be at least one, but as we burn fuel off, it will uh, get a little bit better, and um, it'll actually work a little more efficiently. So it is a little slow at first, probably because it is a bit heavy, 20,000 kilograms. I feel like my other one was lighter. I don't know. I'll have to check it out, check out the other one just to see. Um, but anyway, this thing, it works pretty well. It's pretty stable. Let me just do a little test, see if I can turn without flipping out completely. That's kind of the test. If you can turn without flipping out, then you've done a good job. Yeah, it seems alright. All things considered, it's pretty stable.
I won't attempt a landing right now because I'll probably muck it up horribly. <laughs> That's just what I do. I did practice a bit though with my other one. I practiced landing a lot just to just to get you ready for it because I know that uh, I'm gonna have to really be good at landing if I want to take this thing to lathe. if I can get it close. Yeah, maybe we'll try landing. I don't know. Let's see what happens. We'll just try it. We'll get the landing gear out. We've got to turn this thing. We're not exactly approaching from the most ideal angle here, but uh, we're going to see what happens. We'll go down to like one-third. Please don't judge me if I completely muck this up. <laughs> Again, I'm learning. I'm learning, all right? Gotta cut me a break here. This is, I'm not as good at uh, these SSTOs or aircraft as I am with rockets. Rockets are my thing. Ooh, a little bit. Uh... Ooh, 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 ooh. And the crew survives. <laughs> so again, uh, my landing needs vast improvements, but please don't judge me on this uh, one or twice or how many times have I crashed so far on camera? Twi twice. Don't judge me on that alone. I was promised I'll get better. The point of this episode was how to build one. Um, it does fly, does fly pretty decently. I just can't fly it for crap. But until the next time, I hope you enjoyed watching, and we'll see you in that next episode.